Hej og velkommen til. Mit navn er Steffen Gammelgaard, og jeg har arbejdet med WordPress i sådan fuld tid i en to og en halv års tid. Og øh, vil gerne fortælle jer lidt omkring Theme Customizer. Og fedt at se, at der faktisk er øh, så mange, der synes, det er spændende. Øh, det er jo nok den lidt mere nørdede, lidt dybere del af, af WordPress. Lidt mere end bare at ændre lidt styling på themes. Øh, men øh, forhåbentlig kan jeg give jer øh, smag på at springe ud i det. Øh, og få det præsenteret på en måde, som ikke virker sådan alt eller alt for rodet. Og Uh, uafkommeligt, men um, jeg skal faktisk vise nogle ting, ja, som gør det meget nemmere at arbejde med Theme Customizer, end det har været tidligere. Uh, men det kommer vi til. Uh, lidt kort om mig. Uh, jeg har uh, webbyrået, kan man sige. Det er bare mig. Uh, og lidt freelance, jeg bruger en gang imellem. Uh, Brain Rocket. Uh, og ja, har kørt det i halvandet års tid. Og, uh, og ellers, ja leverer forskellige WordPress-løsninger til forskellige virksomheder. Uh, sorry, er der egentlig uh, are there anyone in uh, speaking English here? Because uh, I actually, um, yeah, I actually arranged this, sorry, <laughs> to be in English. So uh, yeah, I'll just switch over to that. <laughs> sorry? Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so um, I think they'll say this will take about 30 minutes and then there'll be some questions and afterwards I'll all also be available uh, outside. Um, I'm not claiming to be like the theme customizer expert, I didn't write it, but I've spent a lot of time researching it and playing around with it and um, I think it's really, really, really cool for, for creating almost anything. Um, all right, so um, I'll just go through why you should use Theme Customizer, of course, uh, how you use it, and um, yeah, hopefully it'll give you a, like a wow sensation afterwards. So uh, let's see about that. Um, this is like the, the sum of the, the Theme Customizer from a, a guy called Paul Underwood, which just says that it's, uh, it allows you to change the style and functionality of your WordPress theme and see the changes happen uh, in real time. So this is, of course, uh, the, the, the primary, the best feature of, of this uh, um, option system uh, compared to the, to the old uh, options we know from a lot of different themes where you have to go in and apply the changes and then refresh the, the page and then see, all right, how did, how did this uh, impact my site? So, um, of course, this is way more clever. Um, it's also now the only option system approved by WordPress.org. So if you want to uh, upload any themes to WordPress.org, you can't use the old uh, theme options. You have to use Theme Customizer instead. And uh, of course, the, the, the smart thing about this is that uh, as of user friendliness, all of us using themes, we don't have to get to know a hundred different types of uh, theme systems. We just, uh, or option systems, we know we can just use um, appearance um, customize, and then uh, we will um, pretty much know uh, where to go about that. So this is just a screenshot of uh, my own uh, um, customizer. And um, as you can see, I put in, I think, a couple of custom things, the featured image, uh, and the logo part as well. Um, as of the newest um, WordPress version 4.3, there's actually two new uh, theme customizer, uh, customizer features. So you actually have the menus uh, inside here, and you can actually use this in the live preview instead of going to appearance menus. So I think this is a much more user-friendly way of uh, playing around with that. And some of you all also know that um, it can be quite slow to use the old appearance menus. Um, so this is working much more fluid, um, I would say, in my, in my experience. Uh, the site identity has also been, um, uh, been expanded. So we have uh, the 
fab icons in there now. I think it works quite well. And the last thing also they changed is actually when you are logged in and viewing your page, you have the top bar. And there you also have like a link to the customizers. You can have pretty quick access to that uh, from there. All right. Um, yeah, so that was from version 4.3. Um, yeah. And this is, yeah, this is just a screenshot of the, uh, the new menu system in the customizer. Uh, and yeah, you should go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's quite good. All right, so what can you do with this theme customizer? Um, there's actually no real limit to it. Um, and it's really a, a system where you can enhance your, um, I mean, if you're, a, of course, a theme um, author, you can, you can create really user-friendly themes. But if you have your theme and you just want to tweak it a little bit, um, instead of hard coding things, it could be nice to add things to the customizer instead. Uh, it makes it easier also to add things um, while you while you learn and while you, while you deliver, develop your theme. Um, but there's really so many things you can do. Um, if you have a custom CSS um, plugin, you can just replace that uh, and put that inside uh, the theme customizer. And the cool thing is you can actually be writing the CSS in the customizer and see the changes happen on your site. So it's a really, really nice feature they have there. And um, also like adding you can add, for example, a drop-down or something, which adds a class to, let's say, your contact form. And then you can change the layout there, or you can, you can put it on your um, body tag or your article uh, tag and change the, it from box to fluid layout. And I mean, you can just yeah, continue on um, adding really cool things. Um, but um, let's have a look at the building blocks of the theme customizer. So um, first off, um, it's a good idea to keep these files in, uh, separate from the functions file, but you have to call it from the functions file. And then you have pretty much uh, the PHP customizer file where you have all your settings and controls. I'll get into that. And then you can also have a JavaScript file to that um, if you're making some more advanced things like color customization, then you will need to have some JS to, pr to, to preview this live. Um, um, and also, of course, the third thing is that you need um, to place some code inside your theme, the correct place where the options will change things. Um, so, so these are kind of the, the three main parts. And um, the, the first thing you notice you know, when you get into the customizer is um, these boxes here. And these are called sections and panels. And um, I just noticed that after the, uh, the later updates, the, um, the idea is that sections is kind of like before, they kind of had an arrow down. And when you click them, the, the, um, the options came, came down. But now it appears that all uh, sections as well uh, are kind of like panels. So they go into a separate, um, a separate window. Um, so that's kind of a change. But um, you use sections and panels uh, to organize your, your options. And um, it is relatively simple. Um, in the, the customizer file, you, you can add this code. And you can um, add a series of arrays. Um, but of course, the, the, the most important one is what's the name of the, um, the section. You can also add a description, but most of the time, it's, it really makes sense with just the title. And you can see whatever uh, options are in there. Um, the settings and control. I'm showing you now the, this is the customizer API from WordPress. And I'm actually going to show you a, a, a lot easier way, a, a more code friendly version of this. Uh, it's quite new. But um, it's a really good idea to, if you want to go um, working with this you, to, to fam familiar, familiarize sorry, <laughs> um, 
with this uh, system uh, or this um, this code. So you have uh, first of all add a setting. Um, this is just a, a logo, for example, and then uh, you add the control afterwards. And there's a series of arrays as well. Um, this is pretty much um, the the window you see up here, and the select image is pretty much just this new uh, customized image control. And there, of course, you can you can make a lot of other different different things, uh, text or um, drop downs or uh, select boxes and all sorts of things. Um, okay, so. There is two ways of saving these settings, which are really, really important to understand. And it is really quite simple. Either you change it uh, in the option way, or you change it in a theme mod way. And the theme mod really just says that these settings are saved for the current theme you're editing, and not across the whole um, WordPress uh, installation. So you'll pretty much always use theme mod, because uh, who wants to? save your settings across themes. That wouldn't make sense at all. Um, so that's just a, a good thing to bear in mind. Um, and I just found out very recently, uh, I haven't had so much time to get, uh, get uh, to the bottom of this, but uh, there is a new uh, customizer toolkit. It's called uh, Kirki. And um, it's really neat because it's, it's kind of doing what jQuery is doing to JavaScript. So you can really just create the same settings, the same uh, options, but just writing less code. So it's much more simple and user-friendly. And I think this is a good way for, for a lot more people without having to know a whole lot of PHP to begin uh, changing their theme and um, expanding it. So, Kiki is really, really interesting, I think, and it is on uh, GitHub, and there are people developing on it, and uh, all the different um, ways you want to change the theme is actually built in there. So I um, really urge you to try that out if you want to uh, start using the, this uh, customizer. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's just a, a quick example of uh, the WordPress API versus uh, Kiki. And um, as you can see, there's just a lot less code in Kirki than um, the other one. You don't have to um, divide the uh, setting and the control. You have that in the same uh, fields array. And um, also, Kirki, I haven't tested this yet, um, but Kirki should also be making all the live preview for these settings. So. This is really what you have to, the only thing you have to worry about is writing your settings in, in uh, this manner, and then it should actually um, function uh, in your theme. Um, of course, you just need to have the, um, the part that receives options put into the, the, the correct place in your theme, but, um, but that's the only um, other thing you, you should uh, have to do when using uh, this one. So uh, I'm quite excited about it. Uh, unfortunately, it was not that long ago I, I discovered it, so I haven't been testing it yet. But um, I'm pretty sure it's it's uh, it's quite good. Uh, I haven't seen any bad um, bad um, ratings about this either. So okay. So what do I have more for you? Um, did I have more? Yeah. Uh, some thoughts about this. Um, I hope that uh, a lot of uh, people are going to start using this. I think it's really, really amazing. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to see all the new themes also getting out there. Um, I think this is really good for WordPress as well, because um, it's just so user friendly uh, with the live preview. And um, all the, the possibilities are really um, yeah, endless. Um, you can also start maybe removing some different plugins from your uh, site and building things inside the customizer instead. Um, yeah, of course, the, the custom CSS is a really, really uh, nice feature, but 
Um, there's so many other things that you can do. Um, and what we, what, uh, what I'm thinking is that there's not really a go-to library yet. I think maybe I'm wrong. Um, that um, that just gives you the copy-paste uh, settings for the customizer, but um, maybe um, there'll be something with Kiki or something else. But of course, that would be uh, really nice uh, and easy to just go in there and say, I don't want to download a plugin for this. I just want to put it in my customizer, copy-paste, and then uh, you have that functionality. So. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course, yeah, I mentioned this. Uh, I think this will, this is a really good step for um, for WordPress as well. Um, so that is pretty much my thoughts on this. Um, I have uh, given you uh, put in a um, a series of links here for you to play around with. Uh, I think the most interesting one right now is uh, is Kirki, because um, um, it has actually just let's uh, let's have a look at uh, Kirki right now. I have it right here. Okay, so. Uh, so this is uh, Kirki on uh, GitHub, and um, as you can see here, over here is the, the field types, and um, the list is quite long. So um, you can start um, toying with this and um, seeing um, how this, this works. You also have, um, yeah, of course, it gives you an explanation of how to do these things. Um, and where do we have this? Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. Um, the code examples I showed you before, you actually, as I said, there's three ways of adding um, options now to the customizer. The first one is a Default customizer API, and the second I just showed you earlier is uh, this version adding uh, fields, and there also is a third option um, down here. And when you install Kick, it's actually just a plugin you install. You can't really see it, but um, when you start making your um, your Kiki code, then um, it'll be taking these. Um, this code you, you build here, and also creating the live preview part as well. OK, um, that was fast. <laughs> so if you have any questions, just uh, raise your hand. You can do it either in Danish or English, whatever you prefer. I got a question. Um, yep. As you as you mentioned, uh, WordPress recently changed. So when you when you enter a section and you go to the section, it, it like it, it, it goes like a child section. So it removes the current section it, instead of folding down like it used to. Right. Yeah. I know that you can create subsections, but I haven't I haven't been able to figure out actually how you do it. But do you have any examples on how to create subsections so you can keep going? Beneath uh, a section, so you can have typo typography. Um, you can mm. have like like header, and then you can have menu, and then you can have menu options as well. And an option can have an option. Mm. So you can be have nesting options. Yeah, that's the. Um, I think you will be using the panels for that. So let's say you make a uh, a panel for header and um, footer, for example, and inside this panel you will have your um, sections. Um, and I'm not sure because um, I was quite surprised they changed the, the sections uh, last time I was looking at it. Um, but I would believe that sections inside a panel would still be dropping down, okay. like, uh, like you're talking about there. But, um, but sections and sections, have you seen those before? No, no. I, I'm not sure you can do that. Um, well, you can have multiple sections uh, inside a a panel 
and you can have them stacked on top of each other. Um, if I'm understanding you correctly, um, but uh, I think um, I can I can test it out, of course. Um, well, we can use a bar afterwards. I can show you yeah. what I what I what I mean. Yeah, let's take Thank a look. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, you mentioned that some of, you think um, the theme customizer will be replacing some plugins. What kind of plugins were you thinking about replacing? Mm. Well, um, for example, um, I use uh, a, um, a plugin called header and footer scripts. And that's really just not necessary now because you can put, um, yeah, you can put that in the theme customizer instead, and um, anything you put in there also, yeah, you will have in the live preview instead of having to submit it. So I think that would be a good thing. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, custom CSS. Uh, what else? Um, of course, there's a lot of plugins. You know, you have to uh, use it, but there's a lot of small things that you can just replace instead. Uh, also, have um, I use a plugin for Typekit, which also, just could make um, a, a bit of um, bit of settings instead. Um, I haven't uh, thought of any other examples yet. So, um, but I think there is a lot of different things that you can um, where you can avoid uh, using that uh, using the plugins. Sure, but if, for example, your type kit example, yeah. if you bung that with the actual theme. Then, when you actually just deactivate that theme, you wouldn't get those settings anymore. Like they wouldn't translate to another theme, whereas mm. as a plugin, it would. Do you not see um, that becoming a problem? No, I mean, Typekit is, you know, uh, if anyone, uh, yeah, if you don't know, uh, your other guys, um, it's um, it's just fonts, Adobe's uh, font library, and um, I guess you would you would, I mean, if you would be only using the same font across all your themes. Then you can use the options uh, instead of the theme mod. And then you would have your type kit in uh, in all the themes you open um, with the same, of course, um, if you have the customizer uh, settings in there. Um, right, but um, yeah, you you probably wouldn't do that. So if you just use theme mod and um, and make your type kit settings there, then they would be only represented in that particular theme. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, in English. Yes. Uh, this uh, you just have shown security would all the plugins, you, you easily get um, hackers. My site ha has been hacked a lot of times, and I think it comes through the plugins. And this you've shown, it look like an old um, editor way. So you make your own, oh. own code, is that right? I'm sorry, you make your own, own code? You, you yeah. Then the hackers would would have um, difficulty to get into the. Your, your mm. your well, side. yeah, I understand what you you're saying. Isn't like that that uh, good way, I think, to to get rid of the plugins and then make your things yourself. Oh yeah, um, sure. I think uh, it would be more secure to have your. Um, I'm not a, an ex a security expert, but um, yeah, I guess you, you could get rid of some of the loopholes that are in the plugins if you just have them in the um, theme customizer instead. So it might give a, a small um, a, a small security advantage. Um, but I think you, under all circumstances, need a security plugin on any site you have because. Uh, uh, um, I'm not sure there would be like a huge difference, but it might have a small impact. Oh yeah, please. So um, 
When it comes to security, regardless if it's a theme or a plugin, like your site can be hacked either way. The question is how secure the code is. Um, if it's inside your theme, it's still code. So either way, it will still be an issue. Um, plugins and themes, it all comes down to functionality. A theme is all about styling. It's a decorator. You're meant to decorate your house. That's the idea of a theme. If you're putting um, functionality in that theme, that functionality should only be for that decoration. For example, a light fitting is only for that building or, or for that room. Um, whereas a plugin, that functionality can be used regardless of how your room or your house looks like. And that's the difference. When it comes to plugins that are insecure, this happens a lot. It's a known problem of WordPress, especially with the problem of the fact that many plugins were not security reviewed. Um, but I don't think moving it to themes is going to be this answer. Definitely, if you're writing your own code and you can write secure code, then it, that is an advantage. But if you are able to write your own secure code, then in theory, you should be able to modify plugins to actually be secure themselves. Um, so regardless of if it's a theme or if it's a plugin, as my company does, we always security review anything. As long as it's got code in it, it has, it has vulnerability. Um, when it comes to security, it's not a question of will it get hacked, it's when it will get hacked. Um, you're trying to defend from that. Um, there are some really good sites, though. Um, there's one called WP, I can't remember what it's called now. It's called WP Vun, and it's spelt weird. I'll, I can tweet it out. Um, that actually gives a list of all vulnerabilities known to exist in all plugins of WordPress. And that's a really good way. If you're looking at a plugin on WP.org, and you're thinking, oh, is this secure or not? And you're not very comfortable doing a security review yourself, actually just looking at the database, um, that is basically like a Wikipedia, and it's got a list of all the um, plugins that it knows of with vulnerabilities. And it also tell you what the vulnerability was and how long ago it was and what version. So it can give you a sense of, has this been updated and fixed? Because obviously, when vulnerabilities happen, they should be updated. Um, and that's a good way to just kind of check what you're using. Um, all right. I would like to think that the customizer would help in some aspects, but not in all. There's a lot of things that you can't just throw into the theme customizer for that reason. It's a, it's a good. Are there any other questions? And by the way, for the discussions, they should will be taken outside at the, the happiness bar. So just uh, it's a okay. it's well, a good yeah. any more uh, questions? It's a good point you have that. Of course, the theme customizer, as his name says, uh, the the primary prim primary idea is uh, is styling um, and um, and modifications, but. Um, I think the um, the use of it uh, can expand further than that, um, but um, uh, let's see uh, what happens in the future with uh, the customizer. Uh, as of um, writing neat code as well, there is a, a sanitation uh, code sanitation inside um, um, the customizer, so uh, it it ha does have this um, this way of making sure the code um, doesn't break. Um, so that's a, a nice feature as well. Yeah. Sorry. Run, Forrest. <laughs> so uh, with the theme customizer, it is possible to change like colors uh, of the theme. Um, what what if uh, you're using like a post processor, or pre processor? Uh, for the for the themes CSS, are there any kind of options or ways we can get around using the same variables? Using the same? Using maybe the same color variables or something like that. So we only has to make mm. one CSS. Yeah, um, I, I actually worked a lot with uh, color customization in uh, the theme customizer, and I think um, the 2015 theme is a really good example of how you can do this. Um, and let's say you want to make a, a color customization uh, uh, section for your theme. 
then you can actually use a found a really nice site. It's called uh, codebeautifier.com. And it actually takes like your whole list of styles. And then you can ask it to um, combine, um, for example, um, all, the, all the code which has um, the color, all the code that has uh, background color. And then you get uh, all of that neatly put in, inside uh, its own uh, section. And then you can use this um, in your color, um, color options. Uh, so it's really, really nice. Um, and um, of course, you can put this code. Oh, this is this getting quite technical without showing you any code. But um, yeah, that is possible. Um, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Hmm? OK, any more questions? Let's give Seven a hand. <laughs> 